In today's tutorial let's explore broomstick lace. This is a wrap but in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to either make a wrap, a shawl or an afghan using this exact same stitch and I'm going to show you the secrets to doing that and that's right after this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to experience broomstick lace and what you're seeing here is the broomstick lace wrap. Now the designers did a, such a great job with this is that I can show you how to change the width of your wrap so you may want to make it as a scarf or maybe even as big as an afghan. I'm also going to show you how to change the width of uh, the length so that you can change whatever you want to do. So maybe you want an extra long scarf, maybe you even want an afghan. That's huge. I'm going to give you and show you the power to do that because what we have to pay attention to the most is the edging and by my suggestions that I'm going to have a little bit further in this tutorial I'm going to show you what you need to look for in order to keep your pattern consistent. So broomstick lace, exactly what is it? So we're actually using uh, a large knitting needle. You could actually use a broomstick as long as it's nice and sanded down but it's a really kind of a cool concept to make this lacy things. You could also use PVC pipe, whatever you have. You don't need it to be too long but you would do need it long enough that you can probably jam it between your legs and just to be able to uh, easier to hold the thing. Um, usually what I do is I sit on the bed and I put one side of the knitting needle under one leg and the other side is on the over leg. So so then it's kind of pointing up just kind of like you see right here. It's a little awkward at first but once you get used to it it actually is no big deal because there's a little bit of hand motion difference versus a regular crochet to using a broomstick just like this. So what we're seeing here is that this gapping space that you see in here is determined by your, your uh, broomstick. So the bigger the stick and the bigger the gap. So if you have like really chunky yarn um, it, it changes the way that it looks. So for example say I use the same hook here or uh, broomstick for this hole but I use much chunkier yarn you probably wouldn't, e wouldn't even see it. So you wanna make sure that your, your knitting needle complements your actual or your broomstick complements your actual yarn that you're going to be using today. So as I promised earlier I'm gonna show you how to change the width so it can be uh, much smaller if you just want a scarf. I'm also going to show you how to change the length. So here's all the instructions. It's a free pattern available on yarnspirations.com and it's using Peyton's lace that you're seeing right here. Okay so this is the exact same model. It looks a little bit different color on the picture but that's just cause it's my printer. So what the designers have done is that they have provided us an actual diagram to follow because I love diagrams and so we can actually just kind of see what's happening here. So we have the exterior border coming around but we're gonna concentrate on going back and forth and here you can see four broomsticks in a row. So if you wanna change the width at any point all you just need to do when you're doing this is chain in groups of five or sets of five. So go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five until you get to the length that you want or in, and if you want this exact same wrap then you're just gonna have to go it says chain 81 and if you notice that that is almost a multiple of five because at the end of your group I'm gonna have five. So you go five, 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 five you're gonna add one therefore that's why there is chain 81 right up at the top here so that it's groups of five and then they're adding one chain at the end. So basically every broomstick that you see here is in groups in made up of five single crochets and then after that we're gonna do another layer of single crochets and then broomstick once again. So how do you change the length of this whole thing? So what you can just do is that you'll notice that and I had actually just drawn it here that I figured out every time you have a group of three broomsticks plus one single crochet line you can actually physically go around and follow the diagram in order to make the edging perfect. So if you wanna change the length at any point you just have to make sure it's in a multiple of three. So it could be three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, etc., etc., etc. So as long as you always have them in groups of three at one time then you can actually uh, do this border because it's doing some fancy work in the middle right here and so in order to get balance you have to have it so it spreads over three broomsticks just like this. So today's tutorial I'm going to go with something a little slightly different, the Peyton's Metallic and I'm gonna use a five millimeter size crochet hook and if you wanna substitute your yarn you can follow what's in the diagram or in the pattern but all you just need to do is just look for the back label. It says five millimeter size H crochet hook and so basically I can um, basically assume that it's gonna work out fine for me. Now if I want my broomsticks to be shorter then I'm gonna want a more um, smaller 
knitting needle to work with or a broomstick and if I want them even fatter or even more gaps then I have to make sure that this is even bigger. So without further ado let's uh, begin right after this. So let's begin. We're going to start off with a slip knot and I'm gonna keep my broomstick here. I'm just gonna reposition it slightly and just move the camera over a little bit more so you can see it. So we're going to start off with a slip knot to start and I wanna keep them in groups of five. We've already talked about that. So it doesn't matter how long you wanna make it. If you wanna make it to the actual pattern you're gonna chain 81 but if you wanna just make it your own you can just groups in five. So we'll go one, two, three, four and five and one, two, three, four and five. One, two, three, four, five and one, two, three, four and five. So once you have your, your, your length that you want you just have to add one extra chain at the very end of the line and then that will keep your project in balance. So a chain in groups of five or follow the pattern. So now we're ready to go back across the chain. We're not ready for the broomstick yet. We're gonna just go to the second one over and go to the back loop of the, of the chain. So just look back, go to the second one, just turn it over and get that back loop. Once you get the first one, the rest of the chain will stay turned upside down and the rest of them are easy. Single crochet completely across your line or across your chain. Okay, so just continue to uh, single crochet all the way across. So now I've gone all the way across and now it's time to do the broomstick. So basically what you're looking at here on the actual diagram you'll see that it sweeps up and then over. Those are large loops that you're seeing there and those are the loops that are over top of the actual broomstick. So let's begin. We're going to just start the first one and all we're just going to do is that we're not gonna chain or anything that we're just going to pull up a loop and insert it onto the actual knitting needle like so. We're gonna go into the next chain that's available to you. Pull the yarn through and just loop it around the knitting needle. Okay, so you're gonna go to the next one on the chain. Pull through and put onto the needle. Okay, go to the next one pull through. Now do you see that when I'm pulling it actually pulls it tighter to the actual knitting needle? So I'm not worried about trying to fix it at this point because I know when I pull the next one it'll, see? It just comes in line. So they all kind of stay the perfect length. That takes a little bit of just trust within yourself and you're gonna move all the way down the line and I'm just gonna hold it slightly different. So I always find starting the line always kind of awkward in my hands but once I get it going like this I can just do it all the way. So now that we are going in groups of five, there should always be groups of five of these big loops on the knitting needle. Now I won't deny to you that um, in my, I tried an actual sample and if you're off and add an extra one at one point it's not a big deal to fix. Um, you can just kind of fake it or make it. You just don't wanna do it too often. Okay, so I'm moving all the way down. I'm not counting because I'm trusting in myself that I had enough of the chains and I'm putting them on. I find uh, the broomstick is actually easier to do on a table than it is to sit and try to do it on your lap. But that's a personal preference. Anything's possible. If you have a better way it's great. Okay, so I'm moving all the way down. And I'm just pulling and I'm making sure I get to that very last one. And what I do right in the very beginning which I'm gonna do in just two seconds here is that I'm going to just verify that there is the right number just in case. So now I've gone all the way down and so the whole thing is now on. So what I just do is I'm gonna say in groups of five. So I go five and then there's another five. There's another five here. Oops, is there another five? So one, two, okay so then I, I verify that there's groups of five so I just kind of pull it. So now all, all I'm just gonna do is verify so I just go and grab, okay there's five so there's one group. And there's another group of five right there. 
Um, here's another group of five right there and then there's five here. So I know that it's in balance at this point and so now I'm going to begin the actual securing this to make it look like broomstick. We'll do that right after this. So here's the biggest tip that I have for you. So what you wanna do is that this is the string and we're ready to go for the next one. But the problem is is that if you start with the string in front it's gonna wreck your broomstick. So what you're just gonna do is just take this yarn around the back. Okay, so put it around the back and then just grab these group of five. So just move and just grab these group of five and just pinch it in your hand. Okay, so just kinda move it down. Pinch it so that you can actually see directly through the middle of all of them. Okay, so just see that? So now we can see the middle. So what I want to do is insert my hook into this. Okay, and then I wanna grab that string. Okay, the strand from behind and pull it through. Like so. And what I like to do is I like to lock it in position so I pull through a loop first and then I begin to do my single crochets. So in the top of this um, broomstick and I will review this once again is that the top of the broomsticks will always have five single crochets right through this whole loop. Okay, so we're just gonna go one. So I didn't count that first one and this is two, three, four and five. Okay, so there's one broomstick there. So it doesn't look right at this moment. It's not until you get the second one. So then you're just gonna slide the next group of five up. Okay, and off. So just kinda pinch it with your hands. Okay, insert your hook in. Okay, and again I'm just going slower than I normally would. Pull it through and single crochet for another five. So one, two, three, and four. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so now the next group of five. So just slide up. Okay, so I'm getting quicker at it because it's getting more easier to hold. Once you get more material in your hand it's a lot easier to hold. So I'm gonna crochet five more times. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then I'm going to then the last group of five. So just insert in and single crochet three, uh, f five times. One, two, three, four, and five. So leaving my hook in. So there is the broomstick going across just like so. So I'm not worried about any strings that are looking out of place at this moment. Once you start working on this they will pull and stretch because basically these strings are just riding on the inside of those stitches so they can adjust in order to match. So let's move up to the next row. So the next row is easy and it happens every, every time. So we're just gonna start off by chaining one and it's just one single crochet into each one of the the single crochets that are on top of the broomstick. So you're not broomsticking every other one. You're, you're putting in basically two layers of, of single crochet in between the broomsticks. So just go across your entire row and because you're in groups of five there should always be just five single crochets over top of each one of the broomsticks anyway. So just single crochet across. I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So now I'm all the way back across and now I'm gonna turn it and we're gonna broomstick once again. So how we broomstick, we just immediately start and we don't chain one first. We just immediately just pull a large loop and insert it onto the actual broomstick and then we go to this next stitch along, pull it and put it onto the, the broomstick. And we keep moving down the row doing that. Okay, so just gonna make sure it gets right on there. If your broomstick has like um, a shaft like this you wanna do make sure it gets it to the larger part of the shaft in order to keep the sizing consistent. Okay, so just keep moving it down. So I find this kind of the fun part because it goes really quick. So this is why the project grows really really fast because you're basically this whole row is gonna be really really um, tall. So 
So I keep moving down. And you notice I'm not counting at all. I'm trusting in myself that I have groups of five. Okay, continuing to move and then don't forget that very last one. Okay, right there. Okay, so now that we have that on, you're ready to broomstick once again. So I'll show you how to restart all over again. So when you finish the actual broomstick, you're gonna notice that the string is on the front side. Remember what I said before, put it to the back side, it's just much easier and it won't wreck your work. If you go in the front and you go to try to do that loop, it's gonna ruin your work. It's gonna just ruin the whole image. So you wanna just go for the first group of five. So just one, two, three, four, five, slide off. Okay, insert your hook in between and that yarn that's in behind. It's always starting the rows a little awkward just pull through and then just pull through that loop and lock it. That does not count as one of your single crochets and then single crochet five more times. So one, two, three, four and five. Okay, next group of five coming up and one, two, three, four, five. Again, insert, insert my needle in or my hook in. I didn't even know why I call it a needle. I've been doing that for eight years. <laughs> You'd think after eight years of teaching crochet I would not even mention the word needle. Okay, so let's pull through and uh, we're single crocheting for five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Make sure you do visually check once in a while to make sure you did get all the strings or you'll be pretty upset with yourself. Okay, next group of five. So I only have four going across. Uh, four broomsticks going across. And then single crochet another five. So one, two, three, four and five. And then finally the last group of five. Sliding it off, insert. You notice how I'm not being too delicate with it. You don't really need to be as long as you know what you're doing. So two. So that second one I just missed one of those. So that maybe I was just being too uh, excited there. So just make sure you do get all those strings. So two, three, four, and five. So now I just finished another broomstick just like so. Okay, so let's turn our work and move up the next row. So the next row again very simple every time chain one and then single crochet into each one of the single crochets going all the way across. I'll meet you back. We're gonna broomstick one more time and then I'm gonna show you how to do the exterior edge around this entire project that is shown in the project. So I just uh, finished single crochet. So at any point you can just pull and you see how it just ma automatically, so any strings that are kinda not aligned with each other properly, when you pull it like so, it makes them all like a perfect height just like this. Let's turn our work and broomstick one more time and, and, and then we're gonna single crochet one more time and then I'll show you how to do the edge. So remember we do not chain one to start, just immediately pull a big loop and just work yourself down the actual, um, down the row. I think what makes a big difference especially when pulling these big loops is that you have tension coming from the ball a little bit. So with your hand that you're doing here make sure that there's a bit of tension. Don't be too loosey goosey about it. I think I almost skipped a stitch there. And I probably would not notice until I realize that I don't have groups of five. So it depends on you. Um, I have done samples where um, I didn't have a group of five, I only had a group of four. Honestly you really can't tell. Depends on your yarn of course. Um, I was using variegated yarn so it's kind of like a 
a hot mess. <laughs> um, but I could get away with it really quite easily but uh, if it's not variegated um, it really probably will stand out. So it's up to you. Fake it or make it, right? <laughs> so just broom sticking all the way down. I think this is called pulling a loop and insert. Okay, so let's uh, just uh, review one more time and then I will show you how to do the border. So now your yarn will be in front of your hand again. Move it to the back before you start and then slide off the first five. Okay, insert your hook in to the loops. Pull that yarn through and just lock it. So just pull it through that loop. That does not count as one of your five. So Okay, so we're gonna cr double our single crochet five times. That was one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, next group of five. I'm just kind of pulling it. And we just immediately single crochet, right? So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, next group of five. Make sure you get everything on your hook. So one, two, three, four, and five. And finally the very last one. One, two, three, four, and five. So when we're going to do this project uh, if you wanna change the length at all you have to keep it in three broomsticks. So this is three. So then it means that I can use the same pattern and going all the way around. So if you keep them in groups of three. So the next time you could physically go around it and follow the pattern as per the instructions it'll have to be nine or sorry have to be six of these. So one, two, three. So there will have to be another three and if you want to make it even longer then it has to be another group of three. So it'll be nine. But before you can do that you actually have to make sure that you come back across and you're just gonna chain one and single crochet across the top. And then we're gonna start the border right after that. So whatever you do just keep in a groups of three broomsticks in order to keep that border looking consistent and being able to follow the pattern as written. Okay, so I have not fastened off. I just got a loop here and I'm just gonna hang it over like a clothesline. And so let's review on how to do the border. So the border basically is consisting of uh, three rounds. So the first round we're going to single crochet. So we're gonna single crochet along the bottom and the top. You'll have those stitches to work with but in the sides you can kind of count how you're gonna do it and it appears in the broomstick is that there's three single crochets in between all of the these. So there will be single crochet in the end of this row and this row and then it appears to be that there's three along the sides of the broomstick itself. Okay, so one, two, three. So that's the kind of the consistency that you're gonna want. We're then gonna come around and create these nice fans or V stitches just like you see here and then we're gonna finalize off and do the final round. So let's do the three rounds to finish. So let's insert our hook back in and let's continue. So I don't no longer need the broomstick but I'll leave it out of the way just for tutorial reasons. So the, we're gonna start going all the way around. So we chain up one first. Okay, and then we're going to single crochet into um, each one of those going all the way across. Okay. So on the corners, okay, so whenever time we go to turn a corner, so when we go to um, work down a side, we're always gonna put two single crochets into the very corner one in order to main con maintain consistency. So I'm just single crocheting across. This uh, yarn looks like it's metal. Um, it really does look like it's actual metal but it is so soft it's not even funny and it's got a really high shine to it like a high shimmer and so it's got the metallic look but in actual fact it's soft as can be. So in the very last stitch uh, going across you're just gonna add two into that one, two single crochets and then turn the corner. So basically you have a single crochet line here and one here and then I told you that there is three that are gonna be in the broomstick and then there's another two here. 
Okay, so let's begin to do that first. So there's gonna be one single crochet into the, the first, the next row and then this here that you see here is a row. So there's gonna be one there and then there's gonna be three. So all I just do is that I pick a string to follow. So just one string only and just single crochet along that string for three times. Okay, and then we come back into the next one. So there's two rows here. So you come into the side of that first one that you run into. Remember in single crochet when it's a row, when you're coming down the side of it, one row equals the same thing as the height. And then another single crochet in the next one and then let's go and we're just gonna work ourselves down the side of one of the strings. So just make sure it's the, like the last string. Okay. And three single crochets. One, two, and three. Okay. Here's the next single crochet row. So one into that one. One into the next one. Okay. So again just the last string. One, two, and three. Okay, when we're coming down to the bottom there's two rows left. So you got the one there and then the next row is another corner. So we're, when we go to do that one we're gonna make sure we're putting in two single crochets into that one. Turn the corner and then start single crocheting across the bottom edge. So I want you to do that all the way around. So when you turn the corner just uh, again using the, the last string in order to have the consistency that you do on this side. And I'll meet you back up at the end of this rotation and then I'll show you what to do with the next row. So I'm just coming up all the way around and coming down the other side that I told you to do on your own and I'm just gonna come up and I'm going to finish on the corner. So when we did the corner, okay, um, we just simply just um, chained one and did one single crochet right into it but we have to make sure that when we come back all the way around that there's another single crochet right into the final and that equals your two and then you just join it with a slip stitch. Okay, so basically this is what it looks like so far and we're ready to start with the next one. So we're back on the chart once again and we're about to start the blue section going all the way around and that's right here. What I do everybody is that I turn this around and I turn it upside down for me so I can see. So I chain three and then we're going to do a double crochet. So these are like a cluster um, just like so there's so it's a two cluster. So we're gonna start off by just chaining a three and then making a double crochet, chain three, a cluster and then we're gonna skip over three. One, two and three and then just do this um, kind of it's like a V stitch. So um, double crochet, chain three, double crochet. Again skip another three and then we're gonna do the cluster situation once again. So let's begin the next one. So we're just gonna immediately chain up three. So one, two and three. I got my diagram upside down so I can follow and I want to do a double crochet into the exact same stitch that I just came out of. Okay and now we're going to chain three. One, two and three and now we're gonna do a double crochet cluster. So we're gonna wrap our hook going into the exact same stitch because it's a corner. Pull through, pull through two and hold like so and let's do it again. So wrap the hook going into the same stitch. Pull through, pull through two and hold. You have three loops on your hook at this moment. Yarn over and pull through all three. Okay and that's a cluster. So as I promised you we're gonna skip over three stitches. One, two and three go to the fourth and it will be um, a double crochet into that one followed by a chain three. One, two and three and coming back into the same stitch for a double crochet. Okay, let's continue to move along. So now we're gonna skip over another three. So one, two, three, go to the fourth and go and do a double crochet cluster. So wrap into the fourth one and you notice that it's right in the middle of a broomstick so that means that's correct and just um, do the cluster. So yarn over, hold on your hook going into the same stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold. You now have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three, chain three, one, two, three coming back into the same one for a cluster. So yarn over, pull through two and hold. Yarn over, pull through two and hold. There's three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through all three. So skip another three. One, two, and three. This time it's the same as what's right here. So it's a double crochet. Okay, followed by a chain three. One, two, three, back into the same stitch. 
Okay, skip another three and then that'll be your double crochet cluster again. Okay, once you get the cluster done, chain three and then back in. Okay, and now we're ready for uh, the final. So what we have at the very end and I'm improvising at this point because the reality is is that I probably should have had an odd number of these broomsticks going all the way across but you know you can always improvise when you can, right? So at the very end of the row I'm just going to put in my um, cluster once again. Okay, so sometimes you just gotta alter what you see to make things work. So chain three and then back into the same one. Okay, so there you go. So I can turn my corner like so. So let's turn our corner and do we immediately come up the side. So again skipping three and then this time we're going to double crochet, chain three, one, two, three, double crochet. Okay, the next time that we're gonna do skip three, one, two, three, go to the fourth for a cluster. One, two, and three. Cluster once again. The kind of the truth is really too, like you don't have to do these clusters if you really didn't want to. If you wanted to um, just do those other kinds of stitches that you prefer, it's up to you. It is your own hands and it's your own creativity. Okay, skip another three, one, two, three. Okay, so this time I'm gonna come right up to the edge Okay, to maintain that. Okay, so I, if I skip over three, I'm basically, it's the fourth one I'm going into. Um, I'm just improvising at this point in order to make it work. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so that's kind of what you had. So you kind of had your clusters, you had your single crochet or uh, double crochets there. Let's turn our work once again and again going to the third one over, double crochet, chain. Okay, so what I did here is that when I, because I improvised on the other side, I put a cluster. I'm gonna do a cluster there as well. Um, it's just, it's just to be consistent. So normally it would have been a uh, double crochet chain three if you're following the pattern. But because I'm improvising a little bit at this point, I'm just making up my own rules. And by doing this you can change the sizes of anything that you want with this, this particular kind of styling of stitch. Okay, chain three. Okay, skip over three, cluster into the next. Oops, if it's a cluster. So basically, you know, anything with the crochet is just a matter of uh, trying to make it work for what's, what you're up to. Okay, chain three. And just follow the diagrams and the written words as best you can. We're now coming up on the very edge for your next one. So that's gonna be a cluster. So make sure you do finish the corners with the cluster if you're gonna improvise. Okay, coming down the final edge. Okay, just I'm um, reaching over to the fourth one. Single crochet, chain three. Okay, going to the fourth one cluster. Oops, that's a cluster so I gotta go in one more time. Skipping to the fourth, a single crochet again or uh, double crochet. I mean to say double crochet one time that's why I keep calling it single crochet. 
Okay, once you get that done here, we just join to the top of the beginning cluster that we started with. So yes, we did improvise a little bit going all the way around, but um, this kind of patterning, uh, you can get away with it pretty easily. Let's uh, do the final round and uh, therefore you can get this entire project done. So to start off with the final project, what I want you to do is I want you to slip stitch to the actual corner itself. It doesn't say to do that in the pattern, but that's what I'm telling you to do. And I want you to chain three, one, two, and three, and put four more double crochets into that same gapping space. One, two, three, and four. So the chaining of three counts as one, so that's how you get your five in there. Okay, you chain two, you come to the next gapping space, chain three, and just single crochet, chain two, one, two, and then the next one, the next cluster, put in five double crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. Then chain two, and then single crochet into the next chain three space. Okay, so what I did is that we have a cluster here and we have a cluster here. They're not supposed to be technically there because I'm improvising. So what I would do is just put in a five into the next one. And that's kind of what we had to do anyway. In order to maintain that consistency going across. And then chain two and then put in five into the final corner. So it's technically a little out of balance, but you know when you're wearing this thing or you got it laying down, you're gonna hardly ever notice it. Maybe a crocheter might notice though. Okay, chain two, we're gonna turn, okay? And we're going to single crochet into the next one here. So you're single crocheting into these ones with uh, one double crochet on both sides of the chain three, chain two, and then five into the next. One, two, three, four, and five. Chain two. Okay, here's the next one here, just single crochet, chain two. Okay, the cluster is the next which happens to be your corner and there will be five double crochets there. One, two, three, four, and five. Then chain two, one, two. Okay, so, okay, so here is another cluster. And so what I would just recommend you just do is just put in five double crochets there too. I was just checking something. <laughs> When you improvise, you gotta just make sure you're consistent. Uh, my good friend Della Wilkins says to me, you never screw up in crochet because if you screw up, if as long as you keep screwing up all the time in the same spot, it's not a screw up, it's just an, uh, it's creative license. Okay, so that single crochet there, chain two, and then another five into the next one. So it's just a matter of once you, she says once you screw up once, just keep screwing up because then it's not a mistake. <laughs> I like that advice actually. So just continue that same pattern and going all the way around. Basically it's five double crochets followed by chain two with a single crochet in the middle and I'll meet you at the end and we'll just uh, quickly recap. Once you come all the way back around you will have a last single crochet and then chain two and then just join it to the top and therefore this project would be done. Make sure you go to an actual chain not a gapping space like so. So therefore you kind of have your patterning going all the way around just like so. You got your broomstick in there and it's actually kind of neat just like you see it. So this is how you would do the broomstick lace shawl and this is how you'd be able to change it with a little bit of uh, improvising on your behalf and you can make it work for you. Till next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as yarnspiration.com.